During the end of World War II, Japan planned to launch a biological attack on the west coast of the United States. This operation, however, did not take place. In this alternate history, we will be exploring what happened had the Japanese actually biologically bombed the western coast of the United States. But first, we need some context. In December 1944, Operation PX was proposed by the Japanese Naval General Staff led by Vice Admiral Jisabu Ozawa. The name for the operation came from the Japanese use of the codename PX for infected fleas. It was also referred to as Operation Cherry Blossoms at Night, which I will use as the name PX reminds me of VX gas warheads, and I know I wouldn't resist the urge to add in pictures from the 1996 movie The Rock. In planning the operation, the Japanese Navy partnered with Lieutenant General Shiro Ishii of Unit 731, who had extensive experience on weaponizing pathological bacteria and human vulnerability to chemical and biological warfare, which translates to doing a lot of nasty war crimes in China. The plan for the attack involved Xi'an aircraft launched by submarine aircraft carriers upon the west coast of the United States, specifically the cities of San Diego, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. The planes would spread weaponized bubonic plague, cholera, typhus, dengue fever, and other pathogens in a biological terror attack upon the civilian population. The submarine crews would infect themselves and run ashore in a suicide mission. Planning for Operation Cherry Blossoms at Night was finalized on March 26, 1945, but shelved shortly thereafter due to strong opposition from Japanese Chief of General Staff Yuishiro Umezu. Umezu later explained his decision as such, if bacteriological warfare is conducted, it will grow from the dimension of war between Japan and America to an endless battle of humanity against bacteria. Japan will earn the derision of the world. In this scenario, biological attacks are committed on U.S. home soil by Japan around May 1945, following Germany's defeat. Los Angeles, San Diego, and San Francisco are hit by weaponized bubonic plague and other nasty stuff that the Japanese were developing in China. The attack comes after a series of Japanese Fugo balloon bombs that had hit the continental United States in the prior months. But unlike the balloons, the War Department could not censor an attack like this. The U.S. would fear more attacks and be filled with even greater resolve against the Japanese for committing sea burn attacks on the west coast. In this timeline, the U.S. would want serious revenge against the Japanese Empire. There would be more firebombing and carpet bombings of the Japanese islands before the atomic bombings at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The U.S. would have a better prosecution of Japanese war criminals like Unit 731 and other Japanese sea burn styled forces. The post-war UN would further outlaw the use of chemical and biological weapons. Japan in our timeline had been seen as the access to Asia by the Allies at the start of the Cold War, and rebuilding the country and reconciling was important, especially with the incoming Korean War. However, in this timeline where Japan had conducted Operation Cherry Blossoms at Night against the West Coast, the U.S. would be less likely to be friendly towards Japanese reconciliation, even after the increased retaliatory bombings that had been conducted on the Japanese islands. However, the U.S. would still rebuild Japan after 1945, but, you know, they would leave less war criminals roaming around. Another very important part of this scenario is the west coast of the United States. The U.S. would have to seriously rebuild and fix up the city after having been chemically bombed, which I'm not a scientist. I really don't know how much work this would take, but I know it would take a lot, and the civilian populations would uh, definitely not be very happy with Japan. In conclusion, not a whole lot changes between this timeline and our timeline for the geopolitical stage. However, one thing that does change is Japan is heavily viewed as the enemy of World War II more so than they are today because a lot of their war crimes would be more mainstream and especially with the chemically bombing of the western United States with all the plagues and stuff. Yeah, they're more so out in the open. The post-war UN and allies would definitely have more teeth to their threats against chemical and biological weapons than they do currently today. That's the thing about alternate history. Sometimes small changes or large changes can have very little impact on the global geopolitical situation, but still cause lots of damage. Or with alternate history, it can be exactly the opposite. You could have a small or large change in history, and it would have drastic consequences that would completely change the way the timeline goes. Thank you very much for watching.